Hello everybody. It's good to be back again. And uh, just in case I'm going to talk a little low because it's pretty quiet out there. There's hardly any noise. <clears throat> and today we're going to do figure drawing and we're going to review Drawing Beautiful Women by Frank Cho Method. Now, the reason why I didn't show you this book before, it was because there was a lot of nudity. But not real nudity, but just nudity like, um, you know, drawing nudity. But since my channel is more focused on people that are uh, over 18 years old, so I don't think I should have a problem by showing you guys this book. So let's get started. Right, let me get comfortable. Okay, it's a good thing that uh, my beloved brother is not here today, so I have the uh, air conditioning low, because I don't need it, plus the house is really cold, so already you guys already know the situation with the air conditioning here is unbelievable. Um, okay, so let's get started with this book. This one is by uh, Frank Cho, and he's um, done stuff for, I think, Marvel and DC Comics. And I think he does, um, I think he works for Dark Horse Comics, not really sure. But anyway, you could just look him up, just in case if you guys are not familiar with uh, Frank Cho. I think he's a Japanese, but he draws very beautiful women, which I'm going to show you right now, so... And again, I'm going to have to show you uh, vertically everything. So let me see if I can bring this a little higher. So maybe I'll be able to show you two pages at once. And then when I start drawing, then, um, then I'll probably... Uh, no, nah, it doesn't go all the way up. Okay, it's better than nothing anyway. So he does a lot of great uh, pen work, as you can see, nice details with pen. So, drawing Beautiful Women, the Frank Cho Method. Now, this is the thing is, they don't show you, <clears throat> in this book, it doesn't show you too much how to, you know, draw step by step like most books. So I'm going to have to show you pretty much how he does his figure drawing. And it's sort of like um, Romero. Romero actually draws like him a lot. So these are the proportions right here, the basic anatomy. This is our backside right here. And here we have the profile and, you know, three segments, four segments, actually one, no, three segments, just like the Loomis uh, method is three segments, but a half on the top because where the head is on top of the head. And then we have um, over here, the front view. I'm also going to show you how you can do a face by capturing the shape of the face without using the chopped um, circles. Of course, we're gonna use a circle, but we're gonna imagine that we're gonna see the uh, slice part of the circle, just like you see over here. And uh, I saw a tutorial by Romero that he actually did something like that, but instead what he did was he started doing the shape of the head. Let me show you what he did. So as we go along with the book, we are going to, you know, do a couple of steps by steps. 
and let's see how it works out. Now, um, I don't know what happened to my, um, hold on a minute. I think I left it in the room. Let's get started. Got the sharpener <clears throat> and drink some tea. A friend of mine told me that in order for me to get my voice to work okay, no coughing and uh, like gargle hot water with um, with salt that's what I did but if you hear me gargle I'm gonna try to gargle without you guys noticing it <laughs> okay so let's get started guys um, this is a, a very cool technique that Romero was showing us with um, drawing the face and we'll start with a regular circle right here regular Loomis head circle and then we'll make it nice and shapely okay and we indicate the size of the circle just to make sure that it's okay and right here we're gonna do and I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see it more and I think I'm gonna have to lower the light a little bit I think like that is better okay so this will be center line, the vertical line, okay, and right here would be the eyes, and this is what Romero did, I'm going to show you in a moment what he did, so I'm going to do, we're going to draw a woman, okay, so right here would be the chin, <clears throat> remember that it's going to be three parts. So you just got to remember that from the hairline, one, two, three, and this one is half. Okay. That's something that, um, sometimes I forget to, um, actually mention this part right here, but all you got to remember is one, two, three parts. And then remember that this part right here from the hairline to the top of the circle is a half. Okay. Now, <clears throat> What we're going to do is we're going to, you know, very lightly, that's it. Imagine that we see the circle in a slight and make sure that it's level. That's even on both sides. You don't have to do, you know, the whole line. All you have to do is visualize it. But the reason why I'm doing it a little bit lighter so you can get an idea of what I'm going to do. So, so imagine that you're seeing the circle sliced, okay, without making you know, too much lines. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to do the shape of the face. Okay, so we'll look at her, you know, we'll study her. Notice that it goes like this and it goes like this and it goes like that. So that's what we're trying to capture here. It goes like this, it goes like that, it goes right here, and it goes like that, see? And then another way of doing this is by um, actually doing the ears. You could do the shape if you want, but um, since you have this already sliced, then you just actually, you know, do the, uh, the ears, do the ears first, right? And then what you're gonna do is you're going to <clears throat> do the shape of her face. And if you notice, it's sort of like tapered in, see, tapered in, just to get her face right there done. And then we'll just line up her lips to make it nice and even there, right there. And then taper in, turn, down, and that would be the chin, right there. 
over here the same thing to the shape and what you're doing you're capturing the cheekbone see see the cheekbone coming out that's what you're capturing you capture the cheekbone all the way and you taper in all the way down to the chin and then the neck is usually most of the time it's in the same level where the eyes are okay so you just got to remember that the neck first let's work with the features that way we can work with the neck afterwards so we work with the features which we like i mentioned before the focal the the main important part of the face is usually the nose and the eyes but you always, just like Loomis and Romero explains, you just got to start with the nose. You always have to start with the nose. And we're going to start with the nose. Sort of like a, you know, a triangle shape or a pyramid shape. Notice that he actually brings it all the way down and kind of like tapers, tapers out the shape of a triangle there. <clears throat> Now, this may not look like his drawing, but I'm doing it the way Loomis and Romero actually does it. So from the corner of the nose, I'm going to go up and very lightly, you know, very ghostly, I am going to do a circle just like Romero does. Then I visualize another circle here and then another circle here. See, that would be my eyes. Now, I could do this make the shape of the eye right there you know that would be the length you see the circle actually would help me actually keep my eyes nice and even so if you want and i know i mentioned you guys to you know do an oval but no it's better to use use a circle or you can actually indicate the eyes like this just like that okay that's all you got to do i don't know if you guys could see that yeah i think you could all right now we're going to work with her eyebrows and women's eyebrows are thin and this one also right here okay and the eyes are pretty much how romero actually does it you can see three parts of the eye shapes this one goes all the way down, all the way to where the tear duct is. And we'll do over here, right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Okay? So that's the way Romero does his um, his eyes. Also, there's a, there's a good way. Also, you can always turn your drawing like this. That way you have a good balance. And it's called rhythm. You know, you're actually doing rhythm when you're drawing by just moving the drawing around and stuff. So, so you could do that, you know, move your drawing around because it kind of gives you a better understanding how you're drawing your, your drawing and stuff. So I'm going to work with her eye right here and just simply do her eyelashes right there eyelashes okay so so far so good now the only problem with this picture is that it's sort of like the face is too skinny so you can always fix that i mean you could always bring in the face in so let's do that let's bring in let's get our favorite favorite eraser which i hope i got it here with me in the break room oh no here it is i got it okay good all right yeah but sometimes i draw on my in the break room and um i almost forgot but no i got it this is the eraser my favorite eraser so right here goes in a little bit in so it doesn't matter you can always fix this 
make sure that you have a perfect face. Not a perfect face, but you know, you just make sure you get your proportions right on the face. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're just, you know, learning right now. Just like me, I'm still learning. We have her neck. Notice that um, just like um, Legaspi, Legaspi does like a big V shape for the neck, you see? Right here and right here, see? So he did a line here in back of the ear and another line here in back of the, usually I do that. I do a line right behind where the jaw is. Okay, so let's get done with this. Okay, and then we have the head right there, you see? Okay, so we finish the ears a little bit. <clears throat> and then we could fix her nose. Okay, now we could work with her lips. So, if we look at the lips, it's sort of like a bird shape. You see that, the shape of her lips right there? It's like a bird shape. So that's what we want to capture. We want to capture the bird shape. Another way also to do the, you know, the, from the bottom of the nose to the lips is doing the, this shape for the lips. Kind of like bring it out like this. It looks kind of like a cone shape, kind of, so. Anyway, let's work with the lips. We're gonna work with the lips, and then we'll do the center. And just like Romero does, we're gonna start with the center of the lips. That's the way Romero does it. And I think that's the way Loomis does it also. Then we work with the top of the lip, see? Bring it up, and then we'll just start working to the bottom of the lip. We give it shape. Always remember to give it shape. Sometimes I forget to do that sometimes, to give the lip shape in the bottom. Now we could just go back and erase some of these construction lines that we don't need. You know, that's it. And then you could actually, if you notice, it has lines like this for the center of the eye, you see? So you could do that too. You could do a line like this, a line like this. It doesn't have to be all the way down. Just, you know, visualize a line right there, see? And then you make the eyes, the iris. Once you make the iris, then you can make the pupil for the center of the iris for the okay so i'm not going to go into further detail i'm just giving you an idea how this was done okay so you could also uh, do it this way and let me show you another way how to do this and i've shown you guys but i don't mind showing you guys again it doesn't matter to me you know you'd start with the circle again right Here's the center line for the face. Here's the eye line, the eyebrow line, nose line, and the mouth line, and the chin line. So all you gotta do is make sure that everything is aligned, right? And all you gotta do is work with the nose, right? Instead of slicing it first and doing the shape of the face, we are going to work with the center first. So all we gotta do is work with the center of the face. That's what we're doing now, people. We're working with the center of the face, okay? All right. And then we'll do that shape underneath. That will give us an idea how we are going to render the lips. It'll be the top of the lip and the center of the lip and the bottom of the lip. So we'll do the center of the lip first right and then we shape it right shape it up all the way and right here right there see <clears throat> now 
you can actually start you know working after you do the nose and remember the nose and the eyes are the key points the focal key points in drawing the face okay always remember that you can do the the circle or the oval it really doesn't matter but make sure that is even on both sides you're better off using the circle because it has a better way of understanding the size of the face okay so that's what we're doing now so I'm gonna do this in black pencil that way you guys understand what I'm doing here because I have a feeling that the pencil and I'm looking right now on my phone so no it doesn't really show that much okay so no it's don't tell me it's gonna breaky break all right so no it's not gonna breaky break Okay, so here's the nose. It broke a little bit. Oh, it is what it is, people. You have to be calm, patience when you're drawing. Sometimes the lead might break, so that's gonna happen once in a while, okay? Okay, I did a circle here. I'm not gonna, you know, I'll trace it with a cert with a black pencil. I'm just going to do the shape of the eye, that's it, right here, the shape of the eye, make sure it's level on both sides, so, so far so good, okay, right here, and what you're going to do is, like I mentioned before, you're doing a mirror effect, once you work with this, you work with this, once you work with this side, you work with this side, so I call that the mirror effect. So the mirror effect is really, really helpful. I don't know whether to call it a method, but um, someone actually showed me this in Miami Beach, this old Italian artist that used to draw a lot of great drawings. And uh, he told me how he draws the face. He does sort of like, he starts here, he tells me, you know, with this Italian accent. Well, you see, you, you, you draw the eyes here, right? You draw the eyes here, and after that, you do the eyebrows. Once I do that, I go to this side, and then draw this eye, and draw... And that's the way he uh, showed me. So I learned a lot from... You'd be surprised, you could learn a lot from a lot of artists that work in the streets. And this guy was very, very talented. He did a lot of religious drawings, um, and he did a lot of stuff that was very, very um, <clears throat> Roman culture and Italian culture and stuff. So he was a very interesting artist. Okay, so we have so far the face right there. Now we can actually start working with the face. So all we got to do is visualize, you know, the shape of the face that's it once you visualize this, the shape of the face it's called visual effect everything is visual effect people visual effect visual 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 effect see right there see and then the ears you could do the ears first and then do the shape also. Like you start here, do the ears, and then go down, and, and then everything starts taking place. So there's so many ways you guys could actually break this, you know. And when I'm saying break it, actually, you know, tackle the whole drawing and get it the way you want it to be and stuff, so... All right, so now we have the eye, the iris right here, the iris right here, and we'll do iris, all right. Okay, so now we can do, so I'm not gonna go into details, I'm just giving you an idea, okay? No details, because I still gotta show you the book, okay? First, right now, we're actually concentrating with the head, of course, right? 
We're concentrating with la cabeza. Okay, so we'll do a hint. Some detail of the ear. Yeah. Detail of the ear there. Okay, so the neck would be like this. I could do, I don't know if I got that right. Well, it's almost there. The problem is that when, once you do this in black pencil, it's going to be hard to, um, to erase. So you have an idea how this is done. All right. Okay, so let's stop with the faces and let's continue with the rest of the book. You can see here that he does the cranium of the head. See, he actually uses, you know, sort of like a skull. And you could get this a lot in the art shops. And here we go with the proportions of the woman. Here we have where the nipples fall at the second head mark. So it's all head. All of this is head, you see? So we eight heads high. The, the profile and the front view. And here we have the back view right here. Okay, um, this is... <coughs> <coughs> the face again. Of course, it's, it tells you right here, draw an oval, ball, and jaw. And a lot of cartoonists actually uh, do this, the ball and the jaw. And then I'm not really sure that may, maybe he started out indicating the eyes first and then he did the shape of the nose but the first thing as first like always you have to do the grid lines you know the vertical line notice that it curves because that's the shape of the face and then of course the horizontal line for the eyes another horizontal line for the nose but my greatest guess is that he started off with um, this line first and this line and then he did the nose and then he started working with the shape of the contour of the face. So, you know, you could do it that way if you want. Or if you want, you could do the shape of the face. But anyway, let's just keep investigating this. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if that's the right word. But, you know, analyzing. Let's just say, let's just keep analyzing how he drew this to this. Okay? So, my great, ooh, it's getting sticky. And it's the, the material, it could be maybe, and that's the thing when you eat and you pr you actually touch this by mistake, uh, something sticky that you eat or something, it messes up the book. So I got to make sure, let me see if I can clean that but without damaging the book. Gotta like wipe it a little bit. Yeah, just wipe it a little bit and then just get some paper toilet. wipe this a little bit that way it won't stick to the paper again it won't stick to each other because it was sticky before I guess I don't know what happened to this another thing always be careful when you look at your books especially when you're eating because you will mess it up with residue of the food you know the food that you eat uh, fruit or whatever I don't know what the hell I was eating that day when I was looking at this book. But anyway, let's just... And this is a used book, so... Alright, hopefully you won't get damaged that much. But it's a different type of material, so I gotta be careful with this. Here we have the woman. And it tells you how to draw the curves for the breasts, you see? 
So it's giving you ideas how to draw sexy women with either small breasts or big breasts. And here we have um, a drawing of a naked woman. And I gotta admit, this came out fantastic. The way he shaped it and everything. And of course, this is sort of like foreshortening. It's like if you were looking up towards her. Like you're looking, if you were in the bottom, looking at her or something. So it's really unique. Look at the way he did this arm right here. Oh, it's, yeah, I think I think it has to do with the, the type of paper. So I gotta be careful when I turn this. I don't think there's nothing. There is some type of residue there. And I haven't seen this book in, in a long time. So I just gotta make sure that that it's not sticky. Yeah, I just gotta be careful. That's all. Careful, careful. I don't wanna ruin the book. Okay, so right here we have the bone structure, right here. Let me see if I, if you guys could see that. There you go. And uh, this is another practical way in how to draw the figure right here. Here we have the back of the woman and the feet. This is another way how to draw the foot and the bottom of the foot. And uh, I gotta admit, you know, he draws very uh, naughty looking women, that's for sure. And uh, of course he draws like stuff for fantasy art. And the thing about Frank Cho, he reminds me a lot of um, I would say Neil Adams and uh, Frank Rosetta at the same time. I don't know why, but he does remind me a lot, the way he sketches. Now, the way he did this, notice he doesn't use any lines, he just used shapes. And I saw one video which I actually um, posted it in my group so you guys can see how Frank Cho does his women. <clears throat> and basically that's what he does. He focuses more on women. You know what? I'm just going to keep turning the page. Even if it's sticky, what I'll do is I'll clean it afterwards, but very careful, that's all. Uh, here's some cool gestures. Um, there's a dinosaur running after a woman right there. And you can see a sense of perspective and foreshortening right here. So that's pretty cool the way he did that, you see? Notice that he did a lot of uh, ovals for the legs right here. You could really see it, but very little. So my greatest guess when he draws, and I have an idea how he does all his gestures, that he does shapes and ovals, you see? It looks like there's um, ovals right here. Let me get my um, my famous ruler here, which I had here, I don't know why. Oh, here it is right here. And let's study, let's analyze the way he draws. So that way <clears throat> we can practice doing some sketches just by um, analyzing the way he uh, draws this figure. So you can see there's ovals here, you see? There's an oval here. And of course, this is like the torso shape of the body. But in the bottom, he used ovals and ovals over here. And the same thing with the dinosaur. You can tell he used ovals on this side over here. And it's all scribbling. Like I mentioned before, that you can draw um, figures by scribbling. And even if it's, even if it looks messy, all you gotta do is finalize it, you know? You refine the drawing afterwards. That's what it's all about, people. Every artist draws messy. And I'm pretty sure all of you already know that. That don't think that these comic book artists draw perfect just like that, you know, no. They draw messy first, and what they do is they scan the drawing and make it better on a computer, or they use a light box and go over it, or they actually erase it with needed eraser and start finalizing the whole drawing, you know, refining it. So there's several ways how all these artists actually draw their figures. You can see that this is sort of like, um, sort of like a bean shape, you can tell. You know, there's a line here, of course, for the leg. And then he did an oval for the foreshortening part, which is actually this, you see? This is definitely foreshortening. 
and I saw a great uh, video by Romero that he did a great foreshortening and let me show you what Romero did so that way you guys get an idea how Romero <clears throat> draws uh, foreshortening so say I'm gonna draw this beautiful uh, figure right here so I'm gonna start doing the gesture you know the gesture for her body and of course let's shape her body and then right here is the bottom part you know very ghostly and then what Romero does is that he does sort of like an oval shape at the same time that he does the oval shape I notice he does the kneecap at the same time and then he starts working with the back of the leg and then right here what he does is he actually does the form of this leg right here and he closes it in with a sort of like a cylinder shape that's the way Romero works when he draws his beautiful women and you could do the same thing with this too you can actually practice by drawing <clears throat> like Frank Cho, but you know, use another method at the same time. So the breast would actually fall down this way. And of course we have to do the triangle shape. And let's not forget that when her arm is going up, there's a, sorry, the muscle that actually goes up and part of the breast is like that, see? This part of the muscle is going up and then right here is the um the breast and then we have the face right there so then we start working with the arms we start working with the arms right here okay that's all you know, it's not so hard <clears throat> and like i said it's everything has to do with visual effect you know, when you have a good imagination and a good eye for drawing, you'll be able to get this, you know, the way you guys want it to be. All right. So. And then she has sort of like a bikini there or something. So, yeah, a bikini. So the leg actually goes this way right here. And we want to make sure that that looks OK. OK. All right. So we have an idea how uh, Frank Cho uh, does his figures another way of doing this also um, he does it like this it's like a bean shape uh -huh. and then when he does that bean shape what he does is he does the shape of the bottom of the pelvic you see like that so you can do a bean shape like that but make sure you do the pelvic shape sort of like an underwear and uh it's uh, it's, it's like you know he actually sees all the shapes uh come together that's the way he does it kind of like how romero actually does his figures and then we'll do the arms this arm this way and then we'll do again foreshortening see right here and the leg go this way and then, of course, um, we do the shape, the rest of the leg right here. And, of course, then we can do the cylinder shape right there. See? Okay, so practice by doing the uh, bean shape and then make, just give it shape like that. Just like I did like this one, on this one right here. So let's do the bottom of her leg right here. <clears throat> Let me drink some more tea. This is getting ridiculous, my voice. Okay. So we have, we have an idea how this is done, see? Let me go down. This will be her foot right there, see? Okay, so now 
what we're going to do is we leave always leave the head for last that's what i usually do leave the head for last okay now i'm going to show you another great method uh by romero and i figure a better way and let's pick another pose but anyway let's keep looking at this book because this book is fascinating um look at all this this is really cool look at all that fighting scene he did and of course to do something like this you have to do great composition like i would probably do a circle or an oval to do all this and then just scribble all the, the shapes that i need to form the body probably it would take me a long time to do this but that's the way it's done by doing shapes and you start off with a, either the contour uh, like an oval and then you start doing the whole scene this is a little different over here you can tell but notice look at the renderings he did this this is really cool stuff right here see of course it's not a finished drawing but it's made in rough pencils but later on he'll go over it in ink but notice all the shading and the cast shadow. He doesn't do too much cast shadow like um, David Finch does. I noticed that Frank Cho actually works very different with cast shadow. Oh, wait a minute. This whole page actually is big. Oh, so let's look at this really good. See? Yes, yes, yes. This is fantastic artwork. This guy does really great artwork. So let's... Okay, here's another one right here. Um, this is really cool right here. There's a lot of great rendering right here. And uh, great. Uh, I'm gonna also show you something that I picked up from Robert Marzulu that to do a profile like this, especially really sexy pose and the buttocks going outward, like you can actually see the beauty of that curve going out even though she's pissed off. But what Robert Marzullo does is, to do this, he does a gesture line first, and then after that, he does the curve over here, see? Then after that, he starts working with the arm back here. And let me give you an idea how Robert Marzullo, even though it's not, you know, I'm pretty sure maybe Frank Cho probably did it, he probably did it this way, who knows? All right, so let's concentrate and let's analyze this a little bit. Because it's always good to analyze every single um, scene here. So this is the way Robert Marzullo actually did the uh, the shape. Just to capture the shape. And then right here is the arm going back. The forearm. And once he captures that shape, then he does this part for the stomach. Then, my greatest guess, this would be the breast right here. Like that. And right here would, you could, you know, you could actually do lines. You could do what Robert Marzullo does. He does sort of like a cylinder like that. And then he does the line coming out this way. Then that's when he starts doing the rest of the leg. And of course, this leg it's coming out more to the front. So it's not a real good, good drawing, but I'm just giving you an idea how Robert Marzullo would do this. Most likely, Frank Cho probably did it this way too, so you just never know if he did it this way. Then the head would be for last right there, see? And this would be the neck right there, and the other part of right there, so. We have the other leg right there, and then uh, that's the leg right there. Okay, and let me do the other leg right here. Okay, so that came out um, pretty good. Didn't come out so bad. Okay, so let's keep turning the page. And again, it's sticking a little bit for some reason. But this is a fantastic drawing. Look at this great composition right here. So what I like about Frank Cho is that he did every character doing a different pose. He didn't make it look the same. And this is very important. When you're doing a fighting scene like this, don't make it look the same. Don't make the same pose. Try to do something different. Like this guy is moving 
this is a different pose here this is a different pose this guy is falling down to the ground and of course she's beating the hell out of all these guys here I don't know there could be good guys and bad guys fighting her also or I'm not really sure but anyway it tells somehow the story right there okay here we have rough drawings again uh, and you can tell it's scribbling you see it's all mainly scribbling scribbling scribble scrabbles and notice right here that he did shapes right here you see you can actually see it shapes and then he does the oval shapes oval shapes here for the leg and then he does sort of like cone shapes for the arms so there's so many ways you can do this people you can do this with either cone shapes and oval shapes you can see an oval shape right here here's the shape of the body of the woman so he does something like this and let me i think i let me if i'm not mistaken he does something like this let's uh, see if we can do this right so he does something like this and then of course just like david finch brings out the hip out and then he does ovals oval shapes and this leg coming out this way and cone shapes for the arms so i think that's the way he does this type of gesture that you see there okay so this is a great drawing right here it's a a woman actually battling a i don't know if it's that's a rexosaurus or well let's just say a dinosaur and you can see the balance line here of the woman's body here nice drawing though even though it's not finished but to me i think it's great he actually caught a great well here's the finish right here with the ink right here i think no, no, this is the one with ink right here. This is, yeah, this is the one with ink. And um, let me see. The, okay, this is something else. Chapter 3, Inking. Okay. It's been a while just breaking in my old pens. That's Frank Cho actually saying. So right here it tells you pretty much how to deal with pen. How to do light and shadow. Light and shadow can be depicted by ink lines of various width. Here's the light and shadow can also be drawn by contouring the lines. You see right here. And pretty much like I showed you the other day, practice by doing lighter lines and darker lines. And especially when you're shading, it's a great technique to figure out how to do the proper uh, cast shadow. And we definitely, oh, we definitely need a lot of cast shadow when we're drawing either faces or figures. Okay, so here we have, um, start with the loose sketch, you see? Then it says here, begin drawing the dress folds, right? And then it says here, uh, number, this is step three. Revisited the idea. Um, I guess uh, he meant the person visiting the woman right there. And then step four, added the new figure. Oh, excuse me, and redraw the woman's pose. So this is the finished drawing. This is really cool stuff. Look at that. Hmm? Fantastic ink work. Reminds me of another artist, which I, for, I think is Byron Bryant, or I, I don't know, I, I forgot his name already, but he's also a great artist. Uh, also, he does great inking. Um, Brian uh, something but anyway I have a book that actually has some of his artwork so maybe I'll show you one day who am I talking about here's the gesture right here and this is the rendering the rough and uh, this is sort of like uh, excuse me oh my god I'm yawning so much that's because I need to go to sleep later on Okay, so here we have a rough M with the inking. So he started out doing the drapes first. I don't know why. I think maybe he wanted to get that out of the way. 
I think I would probably do the same thing too by, you know, getting certain things out of the way first and then work my way up doing the whole body. Then after that, the couch. So here's the finished drawing. Look at that. Hmm? Fantastic stuff. That's the finished drawing. And it opens, you know, it's a good thing about these books. This book, actually, because I don't know any other how to draw book that actually turns with two pages. I haven't seen it yet, but anyway. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, how to draw. You can draw a marvel by Dan Jurgens. Actually, you have double pages that turn. I forgot about that book. All right. Well, anyway, for, let's forget about the book, that book, and let's concentrate with this one. All right. So here we have a nice drawing of a woman sitting in a near a, a puddle of rocks, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right here is more clear. It's a beautiful drawing. No, I gotta admit, this guy draws beautiful women. Look at the way he drew that woman. Kind of reminds you a little bit of that old classic Loomis style. Oh, I forgot to mention, you guys, um, I have another group. Uh, it was actually the third group, but it's nothing, it has nothing to do with methods. It's just mostly Andrew Loomis. And I know many of you already know who Andrew Loomis is. Um, all his work, his artwork, and all, he's, and all his beautiful masterpieces that I actually uh, captured it from Google and I edited the photos so they look pretty good. So if you want, uh, you could join in. All you have to do is look for my group and um, my regular group. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the, the cover of the group so you guys can see it on YouTube in case you guys want to join. It's... Um, it's not finished yet because there's still more drawings of Andrew Loomis that I haven't um, posted yet. Um, when I do get the um, Andrew Loomis books, I will probably take some pictures and maybe post it in the group. I gotta admit, that's very beautiful. <clears throat> okay, this is a painting of a woman's backside. He actually captured how a woman really looks like, of course. Uh, this is him drawing another beautiful woman right here. Um, this is another rough sketch right here. And this is the uh, colored drawing that he did. Because I guess he practiced with warm colored figure against warm colored. And that's the thing I don't, that's one thing about me that I don't, I don't understand too much about colors. I should, you know, but I just don't have the time to study so many things at the same time. The only thing I could do now is, you know, just draw on pencil and, you know, draw everything in pencil and sometimes inking. But I, I don't think I'm doing enough inking like I used to. Uh, but I might go back to inking like I did way, way back. But everything has to do with time, people. It's just I don't have too much time. And uh, with this situation, especially where I live, people making noise. So it's kind of hard to adjust to everything I want to do. Trust me, I got a lot of dreams to fulfill. And it has nothing to do to become famous. What I want to do is I want to create more art, especially in color, color pencils. And I also want to do acrylics. That's really beautiful the way he did that woman right there. Very beautiful. And he actually captured her body too. Now, all these women are definitely, definitely um, from real photos, I would guess. That's beautiful. Really drew her, really beautiful. That kind of reminds me of uh, Andrew Loomis drawing, except that's in painting. Um, look at the way he drew that woman right there. Fantastic. He did the neck really good too. And the structure, the bone structure on this woman is incredible. And here's her whole body. Fantastic looking body. Very heroic, superhero-like type, but very beautiful body. Here we have another pose, another rendering. And you see this one. This one is finished in color, I guess. Okay, ballpoint pen art, chapter five. That came out pretty good when it comes to pen. 
And uh, this is great, people. If you want to, you know, copy and draw, you know, from reference, this is a great book to do it from. You can actually get your own poses. Um, if you don't have anybody to pose for you, these pages are really good. Here's a woman actually with a very sexy pose. Uh, the rendering and the inking, I guess. Cross hatching. Uh, yeah, this is all cross hatching. And cross hatching it really takes a lot. It just it's not easy. That's the shape of the woman right there. Beautiful, fantastic. Look at that. He really captured that. That's the finished drawing. Cho. Okay, we're almost done. And then we'll practice with some cool techniques. And maybe we could use some reference from this book. This is all about cross hatching techniques, how to do inking with cross hatching, of course. And here, beautiful pose. Look at that. Incredible. You really capture the backside of this woman. It's just incredibly beautiful. Look at that. Almost looks real. Fantastic. <clears throat> I like the way he did these guys with the. How do you call it? Uh, I guess she must have been really important that the king said, mm, you're not going to look at my wife, so cover your eyes. And I would probably feel the same way. Okay, here we have storytelling. How to do a storytelling. Chapter 6. Again, the book is sticking. Um, I think it has to do with the material. Yeah, it's the material that's... That's sticky, very sticky. And I think maybe I'm keeping it too long in the shelves, especially with this type of uh, material, it, it's sticky. Storytelling, great, look at that. And this is a great pose to do if you really know what you're doing. You actually do a beautiful pose, you know, just like that. My greatest guess, he started off doing the shapes of the body and ovals for the legs and then cone shapes for the arms. Because that's what I noticed that he does. Oh, it's sticking again. Oh, oh, oh I don't want to break this. Okay, good. See, look at what it says right here. Um, no, it doesn't say it, but you can tell it's gesture. There's oval, the shape of the torso, and cone shapes for the arms. And then right here's an oval for the foreshortening, like over here, you see over here. And then this is the finished rendering, and this is the ink, the finished ink. And yes, this has little sticky parts here. My lord, this is incredible. Yeah. This book was used, so probably the person that had this book before, I know it wasn't me, because I remember it, it had a problem before that it was sticking, so maybe the person that had this before ate, but I just can't remember if it was me. I don't think it was me, because usually... I don't really look at my books when I'm eating. So it must have been the, the person who had this book before. This is a used book, so. So when you buy a used book, you're gonna find some type of damage, you know? But I can't afford like new books. And I remember when I ordered this book, it was a used book. It said, used but in good condition. But the problem is, it's sticky. And I'm really confused if it's not. Here you can see the inking right here, see? And then the rest is in pencil. So, there's a book I gotta show you by uh, Ben Dunn, that he's another cartoonist, and he does inking like this, that he actually outlines the ink first, and then he works with the details afterwards, which is pretty cool. So maybe I'll show you that book and maybe sometime this week. Uh, it depends on the time I have. 
speed rate. That's fantastic right there. I might consider um, doing like I used to. I don't know where I have it. Oh, it's there right there. Okay, my other phone holder and do some tutorials before I start working, but Saturdays, because Saturdays is not so busy, um, before I start working. So I'm gonna do the same thing like before, come like maybe an hour or two hours early at my job and then do some tutorials in the break room. So yeah, because I really wanna finish, I'm, I'm kind of like losing track of everything I'm, I've done, so, and I wanna just keep going at this, you know? A fantastic drawing right here. You can tell it's a comic strip and the composition. Everything actually lines up. Great storytelling. Okay, I'm going to go a little faster so that way you can see. And then we'll start rendering. We'll start drawing. There you go. Okay, let's pick a cool pose here that we can use. So let's actually let's use her. All right. So, and we're gonna do what Romero did, which was really cool. And I figured something out, and I actually posted on Facebook in my group, in my drawing group. So um, we'll do it in pencil first. So I would figure that he would do something like this, all right? This is what he does. And this would be the torso. And this would be the hip, which is the pelvic. Then what he does is he does the balance line. So if I were to look at this, if I'm going to look at this right now, the balance line is tipping over and the balance line. Hmm, something's wrong here. Let me clean this really good. Yeah, something is wrong with these pages. But later, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean every single page and maybe set it to dry or something. Yeah. All right, so because I haven't seen this book in a long time, so... All right, notice there's a balance line right here, see? And there's a balance line right here, okay? So you don't see it, but you can actually visualize it, the balance line, so that's what we're gonna capture. So in order to get that pose, I'm gonna work with her balance line, and then this balance, yeah, this balance line, balance line goes this way. And then Romero, you can tell that when he does the leg, he does lines connected with the uh, balance line going down, right? Um, this one a little further out. And like always, try to do the shapes at the same time. That way you have the proportions right. And then you don't have to kill yourself trying to figure out the right, you know, length of the leg or the proportions. So try to like visualize, you know, do extra lines to figure out how the proportions are going to look, okay? And the arm right here. And, but since we're actually doing, um, and we're figuring out how to do this correctly, so I'm just gonna do the arms a little bit outward. And I'm gonna do the same pose. I'm just gonna make her arms this way and then her head, <clears throat> just a normal front view. Okay, so I'm gonna do this in ink. I started with the gesture, right? Then an oval, right? Okay, following the gesture, right? Then I did uh, oval for the hip, right? Which is gonna be the pelvic. Then I did the balance line, see? Then this balance line over here. And then from the balance line, I could start the arms first right here. You know, just do a hint of the arms here and then a hint of the legs but connect it from where the balance line is. I do the shape, kind of like a hint, you know, and a shape over here, a hint over here where the leg is gonna end, 
and the leg down here and a hint of how the leg is going to be proportioned see how very easy little by little you guys can actually figure this out and it almost looked like her except that i don't want to make her arms too close because we're studying the proportions of the body so i have the arms coming out so i'm going to just do something like this her arms maybe i'll make her hold some knives or something okay now we're going to concentrate with all this now so what do we have? We almost have a whole figure. So the head right here, give it space like that. You know, you don't want to be, bring it too close. Always remember that the head would be somewhat, you could actually do a big V shape upside down and then do the head if you want. That'll help you indicate the size from the, from where the uh, collarbone is or where the shoulder is for the body. Okay. All right. <coughs> so, we have a cool pose right there, guys. All right, so now we're gonna indicate where her breasts are going to be. Her breasts should be around here. So let's look at this, let's analyze Frank Cho's figure. And the breasts are falling right here, okay? So we wanna capture that. And, oops, got wet there. All right, so her breast, first I wanna work with the top of her head. Um, let's make her hair and from right here and I got to remember that the head is more bigger than the shoulders which is sort of like two heads picture picture either a triangle like this to figure from the top of the head all the way to the corner of where the shoulder is or you could actually see two heads length and that would be the the size of her body right okay so now we do cone shapes or you could simply just like Romero does he actually just draws you know very slowly the shape of the woman or the man whatever because I've seen the way Romero works the, the good thing about Romero is that he works really slow um, not too slow but he does it slow and he actually you know kind of like um, you know moves his hand like that stuff like that like for example when he does the legs i noticed that he would just go like that like that and all the way like that you see but i what i do when i do my legs i would just probably go like this and measure and like this and measure but he does it a little bit different but i have an idea the way he draws his figures so okay now we are going to finish the breast right here this is the breast right here and you can tell she's got some really big, big beauties, okay? So then we are going to do, um, you know, sort of like a teardrop shape, just to give it a nice shape for those beautiful breasts that she has there. It almost looks real, too. So, okay, now we could actually fix, actually render in the core of the body, which is the torso, all the way down to where the hip area is. And then we just make the hips right there. And remember when I said about the three quarter view, that this part is gonna be a little bit closer and this part is gonna be a little bit out, not too much, just a little bit out. So if we look at the, the body of this woman, of course, you can see the V shape, the crotch area, and it's actually, it's a V shape, but it's the crotch area. Then the legs start from the bottom of the crotch area and then all the way to the top with the hip area. So you got to keep in mind that the shapes of the leg is going to change when you have the V shape and the crotch area facing down and then the rest of the leg goes up, which I'm gonna show you right now, okay? So let's do the V shape, okay? <clears throat> now, sometimes Romero will just actually start inserting a line coming out from the core of the body like this. Sometimes he'll do that or you could simply, you know, just do the, the V shape that actually in, help you indicate uh, the um, the outline of her legs. And then, then we're gonna do this leg this way, all the way down. And don't worry about the muscles and the details. The main focal point here is to render the figure and get it right, okay? Then you can worry about with all the details, but unfortunately I won't be able to erase all these construction lines 
so it's just going to look like a rough it's not going to look like a finished drawing okay so don't expect a uh, finished drawing because whenever i do my tutorial sometimes i just want to show you how it's done i don't really go for the spectacular like some artists do that i've seen a lot of tutorials that they go so fast and they don't even show you how the process is done which is so ridiculous especially when it comes to um time lapse and you're not going to learn nothing with time lapse definitely not okay all right so here's the eyes the nose and the mouth right there okay and then we'll do the top over here right there and right here okay so we have so far a nice woman pose kind of reminds me of um arsula andres in that and james bond dr no which her name was Honey. Bond. James Bond. And the girl says, My name is Honey. What are you doing in this island? Same question I'm going to ask you, love. And it looks like Honey was actually hunting for seashells. Until they found out that the island was dangerous. Yeah, it was a great James Bond movie, Dr. No. So, maybe I'll make her look like Honey. Ursula Andres. Uh, Ursula Andres has these big cheekbones. Very beautiful woman, but very, very strong cheekbones, Ursula Andres. I think she's Swedish or French, not really sure. Uh, I gotta look it up. Anyway, let's forget about that. Let's concentrate with this, guys. Let's not concentrate with uh, Hollywood now. Okay, so it came out pretty good, see? That's the way Romero actually does his figures. And um, you just got to keep practicing, you know. Um, and the most important thing here, people, is that you have to observe everything you're drawing. And like everybody, every artist says, you, you, you definitely need to practice. And that's how I actually learned by this editor from Marvel, Marvel Comics. He says that you need to work with reference. Reference is the key of making your drawings way better. Once you learn how to draw from reference, you'll be able to draw women out of your head, just like that, or men, or you know, whatever, superheroes from your head. Because I've seen a lot of um, people in my group, they just draw the superhero, but they just don't actually try to, um, you know, figure out how to do you know the muscles even though I definitely need a lot of practice but and then they make their drawings look flat you all this that I'm showing you right now where there's the uh, balance line and the three-quarter view that is how you draw a figure making it look three-dimensional that's very important people otherwise your drawings are going to look really flat and you don't want that now, the same thing with the, the face so I'm going to draw the fist right here. So I've been drawing hands in a long time, but I have an idea right there. Okay. Draw some knives. She's an Amazon woman. Amazon woman. She's going to get you. She's ready to cut you into pieces. Amazon Woman. They should make a series called Amazon Woman. Yeah. Just going a little crazy here, people. Okay. All right, so right there, we have a hint of Arsula Andres. Her lips. Let me show you, draw her lips. And we'll make maybe a scarf behind 
because I think she was wearing a scarf, not really sure. Oh no, wait, I remember ours in the movie, she was in bikini. So anyway, it really doesn't matter. You know, as long as you get the proportions right, that's what matters, people, okay? So let's see, let's do another pose. Um, let's try this one right here, using the Romero method. And then we'll end it there. After we finish this one, then we'll end it, okay? Because I gotta get some rest, people. I wish I was Superman. I wish I was a mutant that I could actually, uh, I don't know, do everything fast or whatever. Um, all right, so here we have torso. Okay. And here's the hip. Okay. Now I'm going to work with um, the balance line. I'm going to change this a little bit. This I did before, but I'm going to change it here. Then let's look at this drawing here. So the balance line is right here. So we're going to do the balance line like that. See? Okay, now we can do the, the legs. This leg going this way, this leg going this way, and this leg slightly kind of going in near the other leg. And then her, let's make sure we get the proportions right. This will be the socket of her arm, so right there. And we'll do the cone shape for the forearm. And then this arm, which I think I did a boo-boo here. I should have never drawn this in black pencil, but that's the problem. You can't erase black pencil that much, but it's coming out. It's just, you just got to really dig to it dig in like really erase there oops i drew on the book bad move okay so now let's concentrate so we look at her body and uh, we want to capture the head of course it's a little higher always leave space never draw because i've seen a lot of artists artists that actually draw and beginners um, they draw the head too close to the body. You don't want to do that. That's a no-no. So always keep distance from the head to the chin all the way down here, okay? And now the arm right here. So she's holding some, yeah, a lizard or something. Okay. Practice, you know, you know, doing these type of techniques. Do, you know, the gesture lines do the oval, like that. Just keep practicing doing these kind of things. Like that, see? Like that. Once you learn all this, right, then you can work with a balance line like this, you see? Balance line. That's it. But make sure you're doing the same pose that you're doing. So practice doing these techniques. Like that balance line here and a balance line like that you can tell that it's got a pose once you do the balance line you see okay so let's work with this one again and let's work with her beautiful body here and right here the bottom right here the hip is going this way and if you want, you can use ovals, but be careful when you're using ovals. So just do like an outline to figure out the length of the leg. And over here also an outline, right? Then you can do the oval to give it a more three-dimensional feel to it. You see? Do the outline, then do the oval. See? Like that. Then over here. You don't really need to do an oval here that much. It's really only where the foreshortening part of the body is. Okay, so here's the bottom part of the leg. And here we go with the bottom right here. Just like Romero does, very easy, you know. Take it easy when you're drawing. Take your time. You know, don't rush. Because if you rush, you're not going to get it right. 
you can rush once you really capture everything when you learn everything then you can rush but you know to me rushing is not very good because from the experience in my life rushing into things for example i got married with two women <laughs> the wrong women so yeah when you're rushing into things things go really bad so you gotta um, think where you head Now we do some part of the buttocks right there, and then we could do the muscle right there. See, we have the buttocks there. She's got some shape right here, and this fat on this part of the hip here. And then this leg goes this way. Now we could work with her breast. We could do two lines like that to figure out the length. This breast is coming out this way. And this breast is coming out this way because, it's, of course, it's a, it's a three-quarter view. And even though the, the bra is shapely different here, and also over here it's a little bit different, so you want to capture that to make it look like a three-quarter view. And then the hair, of course. Okay. So we have an idea how to draw figures using... The Romero method, and also I've show, shown you how you deal with the Frank Cho method. So, if anything, the Frank Cho method and the Romero method it's almost similar to each other. So, all you got to do is you know practice these techniques. Okay, so maybe we'll do one more. Let's see. This is a great pose right here. So maybe we should do this one. This will be the last one. So let's do this pose. And let's see how we're going to do this one. I think it's something like that. She's got big hips, so we could make a big circle. So the balance line would be around here, and then the balance line for the hip area would be here. Okay? Then the leg. Let's do the arms first. Cause it looks like she's tuggling with the dinosaur. The dinosaur is trying to escape and she's trying to grab the dinosaur. And we'll have her head right here. Once you have this and this and this, you could, you know, do the head third. It's whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Okay, so now this leg, it's going this way. At the same time, I'm going to do the shape just to get it over with. This leg is going towards in, and it's sort of twist, not twisted, but moving back. This leg is going this way right here. So we have an idea. So far, we have an idea how to tackle this. And of course, we gotta do more shape on her legs right here also. And right here would be the crotch area right here, see? That would be the crotch area right there. And then we could close it in, sort of like a cylinder shape right there. And then her breast is going down beneath, like a little lower where the arms are right here. So you really gotta be careful when you're doing the this, this pose because the arm is actually forward right in front of us. And then the breast is right behind. So you really gotta be careful when you're doing the breast and we got the the arm right there and then we have the other arm coming this way it's like she's you know holding the dinosaur trying not to let it get away from her or something i don't know what's the issue with her with the dinosaurs because i see a lot of drawings here this woman actually fighting with dinosaurs so i don't know what he's trying to tell us about his um these women heroic women poses here that he does wait a minute this yeah this will be better like that okay now that we got right there okay now here it goes out this way okay so so far so good and let me see um No 
Okay, so far so good. kind of goes in kind of right there okay guys that's it I definitely need to rest and I'm feeling it already I want to thank everybody for their likes and their hearts especially on Facebook and hopefully you guys enjoy this tutorial um, I don't think it's so much of a tutorial it's mainly the review with uh, Drawing Beautiful Women by Frank Cho. Now, I am going to do some tutorials with, because uh, this whole week I think I want to do stuff with figure drawing. So I, I want to rest on faces. Maybe we'll do some faces and heads. It depends. If I learn something new, something that might be helpful, maybe I'll do some stuff on heads and faces. But for now, I want to do figure drawing. And I got several books I want to show you on figure drawing, especially by um, Ben Dunn. And Frank Miller also, I want to show you some stuff by him. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and good luck with your art. Keep drawing, keep practicing.